In part one of lecture eight, we will answer the question, what is the World Wide Web? It is easy to think that the World Wide Web is a network, or maybe even that the World Wide Web and the Internet are the same thing. Neither of these statements are true. The World Wide Web is one particular service on the Internet, and there are others even though more people access the various services available on the Internet through the web. You can even make a case that the web is one particular technology used on the Internet. But in reality, the web involves the use of a few different technologies. At its core, the web is a collection of documents that we can access through it. Not every document on the web is an HTML document, although sometimes it seems that this is the case. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, where a series of tags are used to mark up a document so the browser can determine what component of a document it is displaying and how to display it. Web browsers and servers make use of HTTP, or Hypertext Transport Protocol, to determine how to request a particular web page and how it is transmitted back to a browser on a particular machine. Browsers also use CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, which are used to determine the exact formatting of a given page. Browsers use URLs, Uniform Resource Locators, to specify which document on which internet connected computer will be requested and when received displayed. As we will see shortly, hypertext links are how we indicate the connections between different pages on the web. Sometimes it's hard to keep in mind that the web is only 25 years old. Back in 1993, there were only 130 websites in the world. By 1996, only three years later, there were 100,000 sites. Since that time, the web continues to grow like crazy. There are currently more than a billion websites in the world, and every day there are new sites. While the growth may have slowed down to some extent, it has not stopped by any means. One key technology that is extremely important to the web is the idea of hypertext. Hypertext serves as a link to other pages, as a keyword of sorts. The truth is that before the web started, there were plenty of informational resources on the Internet. The biggest problem was finding it. The simple logic behind hypertext, letting a keyword provide a link to related information, is where the power of the web comes from. Contrary to what you may be thinking, Ted Nelson did not invent the web although his overall design became the basis for it. Documents had links to other documents on the web. These links were the basis for relating documents and to finding them. Nelson called his project Xanadu, but he wasn't the one who saw it through to actual implementation. The web was actually developed by British physicist Tim Berners-Lee who was working at CERN doing research in particle physics. He developed what became the web, specifically to make it easier to share experimental data with colleagues elsewhere. The technologies that he developed included URLs, HTML, and HTTP. He also needed a way to view these documents. As a result, he also developed the web browser Nexus. A few years later, the graphical browser Mosaic 
was developed at the University of Illinois. Anderson, one of the developers of Mosaic, started Netscape Communications Corporation, which came out with Netscape Navigator, which became very popular very quickly. As you can see in this slide, browsers matured significantly between 1990 and 1994. A website is a collection of related information that is organized and formatted so it can be accessed through a browser. Usually it is hosted on one web server or on a collection of servers at one location, but this is not always the case. A web server is a computer connected to the Internet that stores web contents, accepts requests from browsers, and then honors those requests by furnishing the web pages that are requested. A web page is a document stored on a web server whose contents are displayed based on the HTML embedded in it and on the cascading style sheets that it either contains or references. In this slide, you can see that there are many elements to a web page. The page in question comes from Amazon's website. It contains text and layout information in its HTML code. It contains images, possibly videos, and database information. This is a lot more complex than the pages that Berners-Lee originally conceived. The links in a web page can be more properly referred to as hypertext links because it is based on the same keyword-oriented idea of Ted Nelson's. The links embedded in the page can be seen as underlined or colored differently from the rest of the text that surrounds it. Similarly, a link can be a picture, a button, a tab, or an object in some sense of the word. The page shown in the slide gives a few examples of this. Web links can be unidirectional or bidirectional. A unidirectional link has links connecting document A to document B, but not the other way around. Bidirectional links connect both documents to each other.